fstoppers.com has teamed up with Alaya Licardi to create Photographing the World 3, the ultimate photography tutorial on all things landscape and cityscape photography. You're watching the behind-the-scenes series on the creation of this full tutorial. And if you'd like to learn more about the full product, head over to fstoppers.com slash store. It's hard to tell up here from the hotel, but there's some crazy rainstorms coming in, and it's windy. I don't know if you guys can see that down there, but man, it's blowing. Friends are telling me that People are freaking out, running around. So information just came over the PA and said something about the train is completely stopped today. I mean, it doesn't look so bad from up here. Like, the sun's coming through over there. But apparently, they, they're closing the city. It's dangerous. So they had to close the metro, and a bunch of people are stuck downtown. I wonder if Lee and Patrick are stuck, too, and what's going on. Everyone is leaving the train station because the train is not running for whatever reason. And we are faced to go out into the wind. Let's see how windy this really is. Can't be windy, it's nice and sunny out, right? It's great. Well, that left a bad taste in my mouth. Literally, my eyes have dirt in them now. And we did not get on the bus. There's literally like 35 mile an hour winds outside. It is blowing so hard right now. What is going on? Is something collapsing above us? Right, dude. I think something is falling off this building up here. Dude, people are going crazy. We can't stand right where, look at everyone's running. This is where people see our videos and they're like, why were they standing around filming this? Maybe we should run too? Hey, this is my last testament. I'm really sorry this is on film. I mean, the panic I see in those people makes me think I'm an idiot right now. Like, I should be running for my life. What is happening? Is a crane falling down? We just got a text from Elia saying that a crane fell. And that's what we were seeing. The crane fell right above us, and we were watching people run away from a falling crane. Somehow we didn't hear any of the crashing crash. I think this building with the two cranes is where we were. We were on that side over there. The seven weather never happens in Dubai. It's like once every five years does the wind get like this. So it's like perfect weather here in Dubai. That's why people come. Lee and Patrick get here their first day, and everything goes to shit. Luckily, we made it back to the apartment without being crushed by a crane, and it was time to film the next lesson. Drones aren't allowed here in Dubai, so Patrick has made his own mechanical drone. Yeah. I need to take this outside the bird when the falcon is going off and just be like... <laughs> <laughs> Why do you do that? So today we are shooting on the top of another tower, and one thing I've learned being in Dubai is it's all about access. It's all about who you know, it's about uh, who you know in the building, who you know that does real estate or any, any number of things that get you in. So right now we are waiting to get into this next building and apparently we are having to like sneak in a side door and we're actually getting on the roof. We gotta climb and lift a latch to get into this place and so it's uh, pretty interesting to see what's gonna happen. He's not here yet, he's like 30 minutes late which is very, very strange. So at this point I'm wondering if we're actually going to get up to this roof at all. We're gonna have to go a little more undercover than we thought, but I'm gonna try to film as much as I can. So we were supposed to be let in the back door, but apparently that's not working anymore. So we are heading in the front door, which Sebastian does not have a good feeling about. So we will see how this goes. So we have to film like over this wall here? Yeah. yeah. So this is our strangest setup so far. We're on a roof overlooking downtown Dubai and the Burj Khalifa. It's pretty, pretty beautiful, I must say. But check this out. I mean, we are kind of just walking on this weird 
railing here. Patrick, I don't know what the heck he's doing up there. That's not exactly safe. But in order to get up here, I had to climb up this ladder and then right next to me over this like grate is like a, th like a three to five floor drop. And then the other camera that I had set up, I don't know if you can see the edge of it right there, requires you to walk on even more grate. And the grating up there like moves and bends. And uh, this is the, uh, the arm for the window washer. So <laughs> I'm not a fan of heights. I will skydive, but I do not like being up here. Um, gosh, this is just everything about this makes me nervous. But here's the view. There's the Burj, you can barely get it in the frame. And then here's the view if we look down. You can see there's not a whole lot to stop us from dropping anything, so we have to be really careful. Now saying that, my camera is set up on a clamp so close to that edge. So I'm gonna be really careful when I'm shooting here. Make sure my footing's okay. Lee's gonna be shooting over there. We're gonna be doing the video interview and I assume Patrick, I don't know what Patrick's doing. So here's my GoPro secured to the edge of this building and I am really, really nervous. I'm gonna hold this over, let you guys see what I'm looking at here, straight down. And, oh my gosh, I do not like heights. And this is pretty freaking high. Here's the boys filming over here. And I'm just gonna let this uh, GoPro run for a little while. This is one of the more difficult lessons to film uh, because there's really nowhere to stand. We're, we're all kind of having to climb up on this ledge here. So you can see my camera here. I've got a time-lapse running on this little camera here. Uh, Alaya has a camera all the way on the edge up there on a clamp. Patrick is about to get in this bucket and be lifted up. We can kind of get one camera on Alaya, but usually we have at least two cameras. So this is going to be a little bit harder to uh, teach than other lessons that we've taught so far. Here are the three elements of my compact panoramic gimbal. What I need to do is assemble this to get it ready, and I'm gonna use my tripod to get it all set up, but I'm actually going to be swapping out the tripod for a clamp and putting it in a slightly more precarious situation where I can get the whole panoramic view of the city itself. I keep feeling like I'm about to fall off this thing, and then look at this edge here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm just gonna lock it down. Now, as soon as you let go, it will generate a little bit of sag because remember, we're actually manipulating this, but I want it to be as close to center as possible, and right there is actually pretty good. As I start to rotate it, you can see that that center will stay pretty much the same, and that's really nice. So here's pretty much the extent of my pano on this side. When I leveled it, I actually leveled it basically in the center. The thought being, if it starts to go off level on either side, if we leveled it in the center, it'll be a good reading. So even here, barely off, as long as it stays inside of that black circle, even if it's just off just a hair, it's gonna be okay. So this is gonna be the extent of my pano this way. Still looks pretty level. Dead center, perfectly level. Extent of pano again, almost level too. So we have a nice system for sliding back and forth. Patrick, you do it one more time. <laughs> Are you sure that's going to hold? Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, dude. You're making me too nervous here. Sadly, Patrick's gimbal on a stick did not produce the best looking footage. So doing a time lapse on this edge here, uh, I don't have as many options as I had in the previous shot where the camera is actually on a tripod. I have the camera just kind of balancing up here and you can see it's secure uh, with the strap, but if I touch the camera at all, I could move the camera. So I'm not going to be able to change settings as it gets darker. So what I've decided to do, I'm shooting at ISO 200 F56 in auto shutter speed. So what that's going to do is it's going to automatically change the shutter speed. I have locked the white balance to 5,000 Kelvin. 
In the test that we did yesterday, I did notice some flicker when I had these settings on the camera, but I think it's still acceptable. We might be able to fix some of that in post. But being that I can't really touch this camera once it started going, I don't want to have to uh, mess with the aperture on the front of the lens because I know I'm not gonna be able to keep a steady hand. The thing is, we have to be out of here at like 6.20. So we have 25 minutes to get this shot and I'm worried that the lights aren't gonna be on by then. So um, we're entering in the blue hour right now, but I think by seven o'clock is when we normally got the shot. Clouds kind of dissipated a little bit, but we're getting to the point where the sun's setting and they're starting to turn colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and initiate a pano here. Remember, this is completely manual, I have to do this. Generally, when you're shooting panoramic photography, a good rule of thumb when you're overlapping your frames is to overlap by around one third of the image. Now that's pretty easy to tell because you have all these tall buildings. So these buildings will start to fall into a third of your frame. Once you get a reading for that, if you don't want to look through the camera, and it gets very difficult because as the camera rotates far away, I can't see the back of the camera anymore. But what I can do is I can use my degrees of rotation here. So this is all indicated here as degrees. So if I turn this actually from here to here, that's actually a 30 degree rotation. So I've basically turned this from side to side, and what I've calculated is that 15 degrees seems to be an even one third overlap. 6.25 on the dot, we had to be out of here. How did it go? That was fun. That yeah? Was fun. Success? Yeah, yeah, that was great. After a successful shoot and lesson, we went out to dinner with some local photographers. So, we're about to have dinner, and... Uh, well, it took us a while because we had to figure out where to park our yeah, car. Yeah, we parked the Lambo here, next to the Rolls-Royce, and then we have another rolls over here. We're at the Lebanese restaurant, what do you think? It's fantastic. This is like the best hummus I've ever had right over here. Thanks. Look at this, what did you do? I sent you off to get me a water. A water. I just had absinthe, I can't take this. persuade Elia Licardi to go skydiving with us. I'm the most scared person of skydiving. I'm scared of heights. You've probably seen that in the behind the scenes. I do not like being in high places. But the only person I know that's more scared than me is probably Elia. And I've been in his shoes and I know what it feels like. And I'm trying to persuade him that like, if you just overcome your fears, the world will open up to you. Elia told me that the one place he would skydive would be here in Dubai. He told us that in New Zealand. And here we are, and he won't do it. And so I just, ugh. Overcoming your fears is such a powerful thing. And to do it in this amazing, amazing city and to see everything below would be so beautiful. I hope he does it, but all I can do is keep pressuring him and maybe we can get him to do it. I don't think he's gonna do it, but maybe he will do it. Elia, what does this sign right here say? It says, Hive Mind Dubai. Skydive Dubai, you ready to do it? It doesn't exist here, I'm telling you. Oh, I think it does. No. Every day I've seen, I saw stop. a guy in the mall with his shirt on. Stop giving me alternative facts, Patrick. Hey, we'll let, we'll let the viewers decide what the alternative facts are. I'm simply reporting the news as I see it. I think you're fake news, Patrick. No, that's very real news right there. Liz, and what do you do here? I'm a travel blogger based in Monica. Travel blogger, and I asked you if you have gone skydiving here. Yes, I went skydiving on my birthday in Monica. And what did you say about it? It was, it was so awesome. It's so beautiful jumping over the mountains. Was it difficult for you to do? Uh, I suddenly have to take this. Now. I can't talk to you right now. <laughs> hey, Maya, stop hiding behind me. Do it somewhere pretty. Sure, Got it by. So you might as well do it here. Dubai. No, this is prettier than the Dubai. We're in Dubai. Oh You'd rather God. fall on top of skyscrapers. Oh, I, did you? I never said that. Wait, first of all, first of all, I never said that. This is the last behind the scenes I think we released. One I, of them. I never said that. Dubai. I never said that. 
We'll let there you. is not defend that just because it's on video doesn't mean that I said that. Um, I'm pretty sure you just said that. And let's go see what it looks like in Dubai today. Patrick, it you looks... are giving alternative facts. No, I think you are spreading alternative facts. I'll let the audience agree. I can uh I can see people out here on helicopters and there's probably planes going up. Look at that little plane up there. I, I, Wouldn't it be so fun to just get it over with and never have to- Wouldn't it feel good to redeem yourself? And you have something to tell all your students at Golf Photo Plus. Yeah. Instead they have to see this video. I don't really like that argument. I don't think- Look at that fear. Stay tuned for next week's episode when we go out into the desert to attempt to shoot the stars but it's a total failure. And he got stuck in the sand, and he's very far away from me right now. And all of our gear is in the car. I don't have my shoes. And if you'd like to learn more about the full tutorial, head over to fstoppers.com store.